What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with his first ever top 10 video. This is going to be the top 10 characters for the month of April. We're not in April yet, but we're about to be, and there's no characters that are going to come in that are going to change that from what I've seen. So we're going to talk about it. Now, a couple things I want to say before we get into it. I'm going to be doing these every month. If something changes, great. If not, you know, and I'll let you guys comment below if you have opinions or differences. Uh, I rate all characters very simply. Uh, if you are a damage dealer, uh, and that's what you do, you have to be the best damage dealer or uh, one of the best damage dealers that also does something fun or interactive in order to make a top 10 list. I don't rate characters based on how good they are in their team. That is always a benefit. I base characters based on how good they are, what they offer teams, as well as what they are on their own, and you'll kind of see that. And that's why picking number 10 and number 9 were pretty rough. There's a lot of characters that are very good on their team, uh, there are a lot of characters that one for one might be a little better, but since this is not a 1v1 game, it is a 5v5 game, and it's about team building, I'm picking the top 10 characters that will help pretty much any team in one way or another. Uh, so let's go right into it. The number 10 on this list, there are no honorable mentions. There's a lot of good characters, so I guess I will do an honorable mention. Judy Hopps, Jack Sparrow, Sorcerer's Mickey... Merida and Buzz Lightyear are all really good characters that pretty close to the top, but they don't really stand out in a way uh, that makes them amazing. Maybe at end game investment level, uh, a point in which not a lot of you guys are going to be at, but they're really not going to do too much, especially in a counter meta situation that you're not going to experience. So for me, the number 10 character is Simba. Now, Interesting take on it, because Simba is currently unfarmable in the game. He's only available through his event. But Simba is very similar to a Paladin-style character, in which he is a tank that has the ability to heal, a very difficult to kill, and a leadership passive that makes him stand out in Club Conquest. A quick look at what he does. His basic, uh, standard basic attack with a chance to turn meter rewind. Very important. Speed meter, turn meter, you know what it is. The second... His special, Hakuna Matata, restore health to target teammate and all flanking members or in the entire row equal to 100% of this character's current defense and extend their all their helpful effects duration by one. Then he gains a taunt, so he becomes a tank. Now Simba, unlike most tanks, becomes tankier the less health he has, so really, really helps him out. And then 30% chance for this character and teammates to gain defense up. Uh, his special is a another flanking attack at 433 that's scalable damage to target opponent and all flanking opponents inflict offense down for one turn and reduce each affected opponent's speed meter by 30 percent it guaranteed speed meter return he's a great character to splash into a turn meter uh, rewind team like a, a speed team or a kingdom team he's also really great in club conquest because he allows the opponent no opportunity to combat. His passive, he gains 2% bonus defense for every 1% of missing health. And if you upgrade it, it's 4%. So he's gaining four times the defense stat uh, for every 1% of his total health. If he's at 50% health, he has 200% uh, increased defense and his defense stat is relatively high and scaling so he becomes harder to kill the lower he has and so if you can't one shot him or take him out from really high up it's going to be really hard to kill him later uh, and as far as his leadership ability teammates receive a 20 percent bonus maximum health while defending in club wars that's it very simple very awesome part of his team but it's all teammates not lion king or anything so just having him makes him a very good club war defense character and that usually is good enough to qualify a character because he's so good in one game mode that made him eke out slightly more than some of the other characters in this top 10 list so that'd be simba number 10 totally worthwhile investment moving on to number nine we have ariel now ariel is not a amazing character uh, she's kind of a jack of all trades character she get her early so you would think well she's a starter character how good can she be surprisingly pretty good 
uh, we've kind of over her kit a little bit, just to reiterate, her basic is a single target attack that hits every character with slow. You can build around that and make her hit a lot of characters often, or you could just use it as a generic basic attack. Her special is a team-wide AoE heal that has multiple uh, chance, I believe it's five heals, and each one has a chance to crit meaning it's a very large heal and sustain is very important in a lot of game modes so you won't regret any investment you put in her especially in the early game her ultimate attack uh, deal a big chunk of damage to a target opponent and purge all helpful effects so if there's a taunter or someone with defense up you can rip that right off that character deal 10 percent bonus damage per helpful effect on the target so it can really take out the right kind of character if you save it for the right time and it's a pretty decent chunk of damage. Triton's Boon is a passive that gives a random character on your team a decent boost to offense speed meter and a chance to inflict slow. Not bad overall, definitely helps with her, but it's unreliable and it can go on anybody, so you don't really look at it as important. Uh, what really is one of the things that push her above a lot of other players is teammates gain 8% bonus maximum health. 8% bonus health is a huge boost in a lot of game modes, especially in tower, uh, the fact that she's oceanic means she's going to be very useful in tower and even on uh, club conquest or club dungeon she's going to get a lot of value so i think she's a top 10 character just on the fact that she is so plug and play friendly that you can use her and never really regret any investment you put in her so moving off mario we have number eight an interesting character we have merlin where merlin lacks in damage he makes up for in utility. He is one of the most unique characters in the game, and I believe he can enrich any team if you try to look at his kit. Take a quick look at his basic, very simple. We'll wait. Deals small amount of damage to target opponent, 30% chance to inflict defense down. Nothing crazy, plenty of people have a very similar ability. Not bad though. His special uh, is grant tactics to target teammate for one turn, reduce cooldowns of target teammate by three. Cleanse one harmful effect from all teammates. If target is a mythic teammate, uh, grant harmful immunity for one turn. Harmful immunity means you can't get any debuffs. But most importantly, the reduction of cooldowns of a teammate by three means if you use it right, you can do a very, very solid series of attacks from the right character. Uh, there are a couple of good team ups you can use with him, but I'll let you play around and decide. Ultimately, the ability to Oh, back to back ult or use a character like Sean Yu's ultimate twice in a row. Uh, incredibly, incredibly relevant uh, for a very little investment. So Merwin has a really cool ability that people tend to overlook because he doesn't do damage. Moving on to the ultimate, we have a pretty decent chunk of damage that inflicts stun for one turn uh, and it increases the target's cooldowns by one if they're already infected by stun and reduce the target's turn meter. This is a utility move to a T. The fact that it happens to do damage is great, but in a PvP matchup, whether PvP arena or a Sorcerer's Tournament matchup, you can kind of control when players are allowed to do certain things and reduce their ability uh, to take certain actions if you're keeping track of them. All in all, incredibly positive kit that really can help you get granular when it comes to countering certain teams. Not a high priority character, which is why he's only number eight, but pretty good overall. We're almost done with the bottom five of the top 10. So we're gonna go straight into number seven. Number seven is Dr. Facilier. Now, uh, what you don't know about Dr. Facilier is he is one of the very few characters who makes a team better just by being present. Uh, he has a leadership ability that doesn't affect his ability to help any team. It's very specific to downtown villains. It gives them extra potency. Uh, it is all his passive. The ability to heal characters on uh, any defeat. Your team, your opponent's team, a summoned character, anyone who gets defeated, he heals himself and all of your teammates, including summoned characters. Obviously, it's more health for the right team, and if that character is a downtown villain, they get continuous healing, which is a heal stack that procs on their turn and heals them again. This, this ability makes any team better, especially if it's an aggressive team. It can keep characters topped off when they need to be, uh, and it throws a little bit of the math off when it comes to how people can summon, or if they are to resummon a trigger or something like that, can really help. So he is a, a very interesting healer with a unique kit. Uh, his special 
has the ability to turn a character into a frog, basically a stun, more or less, where they can't take a real action on their turn, uh, and they take additional damage as they go. His ultimate ability is uh, weird. Now, it grants target teammate life drain, a shield, uh, and taunt for two turns. So it basically takes either the the healthiest character you have or the weakest character who's about to hit really hard and give them the opportunity to sustain themselves. It also might just be able to be used on a summoned character or a spell character that uh, allows to take the next big hit if you anticipate one coming. So it's it's not it's a very situational ability and it means he's very less likely to be good on auto fight or on AI. But because of his heal, it kind of balances itself out. And his basic, very unique, small amount of damage, has a 50% chance to throw a special card. The special card either inflicts offense, defense, down, or slow, or charms the opponent. Charmed character has to attack their own teammate, so technically he can basically take a character out for an entire turn on his basic, sometimes. Overall, one of the best characters in the game that you can splash, great in his team, amazing for any game mode that requires sustain, such as club dungeon fights, or tower mode, or even some of the harder or more difficult fights in the villain or grand campaign nodes. Really all around great character. And rounding out number six is Emperor Zerg. Now, Emperor Zerg currently inaccessible in the game. In order to get him, at least as far as we know, uh, you require a team of X star, one, two, three, four, five star uh, downtown villains characters, as he is also a downtown villain character. That said, uh, as I mentioned before, I don't care if a character does damage, they have to either do a lot of damage or have utility. Uh, he does a lot of a lot of damage. A quick review of Zerg, his basic hits three times to a target and it deals bonus damage if that target has high health. So at the beginning of the game, it's the one of the first basics you want to lead with because it does the most damage to the primary target. Very big damage. His special is a very large damage chunk attack that deals bonus damage the lower the target health is. So it's a great follow up to the first attack and it's an execute style attack that will take a character completely out of the fight. In addition, when it does defeat an opponent, he gains an extra turn. Phenomenal. As for the third and final ability he has, <clears throat> Rapid Ion Blaster, shoot someone 23 times. That's it. And sure, there's a small chance that any hit chains to an adjacent opponent, hitting them. Technically, you can hit 46 times. This attack is dumb. He is dumb. This is dumb. I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, the only other things to know is that sometimes he'll just hit everybody on the opponent's team. Just sometimes. Once every four turns or so. He'll just hit every person. Just for no reason. Because he's bored. And his other passive, Galactic Evil, uh, whenever he takes damage, there's a 5% chance he gains offense up for a turn. And that chance goes up for every downtown villain. So on his team, he has a very high chance to receive this bonus. Outside, it doesn't make him a worse character. That's where Zerg stands in. Now, if this is number six on the list, you're going to have to ask, well, who's number five or four? Like, what's going on, Tony? Who's better than Zerg? Don't worry, we're getting there, because number five is Mordu. Now, Mordu is a crazy good tank. He, it is impossible to kill him. So when he's taunting, you're going to be fighting him for a while. Taking a quick look at his attacks, his basic pretty decent damage ancient rage empowered which we'll see in a second he deals bonus damage and performs a follow-up attack so he's not hitting very hard but he's hitting often and that can do things like proc assists or just clear through things like a taunt considering the fact that he's a tank the damage isn't that important but ultimately pretty cool overall moving on to his next attack his special deals an AoE damage, inflict offense down on the target of the attack, 30% chance to inflict offense down on the adjacent characters to that target, and gain taunt for that turn. That turn's going to take forever. He is slow. You're going to sit behind him and do all of the damage attacks you need. The fact that he's a Wilds character makes him phenomenal for completing some of the Wilds-specific campaigns, at least if you haven't unlocked the characters from the Lion King event. 
uh, like Simba, but he is one of the most savage tanks in the game. And we're going to move on to his last uh, single target attack, moderate to low damage, inflict stun for one turn, then hit two adjacent targets, at least two adjacent targets, for uh, almost the same amount of damage and a 45% chance to inflict slow on those targets. Think about what you're getting out of this tank. You're getting an unkillable giant bear with arrows in his back and anger in his heart, never ever allowing your opponents to take turns and terrifying them into the closet where Jangles is currently hiding, as you know. So Mordu, when you look at a character like Mordu and you understand what he brings to a team, it's not just a giant unkillable tank because Gaston is a hard to kill tank. It's a giant unkillable tank that prevents them from taking actions through slow or through stun and will allow your team to build out. Great in a Wilds team with Merida and the Lion King characters in general, probably even Hopper if you want to, but also just a great tank in PvP to lock your, your squishiest characters behind and make sure that you uh, can keep them alive. So that's more to. Moving on to number four is Hades. Now, uh, I've been assured by many people who've played this game that Hades is great because Hades does two things, the damage and all of the time. Uh, you know, just a quick check of his abilities. His basic hits a character, ignite empowered, uh, deal 25% damage, oh, deal any amount of damage. It is a scaling decent amount of damage. Deal up to extra damage to extra characters, 25% critical strike chance against opponents affected by harmful effect. So, surprise, his basic does damage. As for his ultimate, uh, AoE hit everybody. That's it. Just hit everybody for a lot of damage. If he's empowered by ignite, damage dealt is unavoidable we'll get into what ignite is it's part of his passive but great like it just does aoe damage uh and a lot of it and that's important because damage matters again as long as it's a lot of damage or utility and damage then it's great as for a special deal up to a decent this is the most damage you see now you can kind of check by the scaling this isn't that high this is pretty high this is more than that so the scalability of this damage is insane Deal up to a decent chunk of damage to target opponent and all flanking opponents. If an opponent is affected by continuous damage, inflict continuous damage to that opponent, dealing more damage over time. And if he's ignite empowered, gain counter. So again, another AOE attack that inflicts continuous damage or benefits if they already have continuous damage. And keep in mind, flanking is an entire row. So it kind of will just run across everybody and hurt them. If you're using them on a team that takes advantage of the continuous damage it'll be extra but you don't need to he's just gonna hurt a lot of people pretty solid as for unbridled rage on turn if he's below 50 percent health he unstuns himself this character's abilities become ignite empowered while health is below 50 percent his hair grows red you imagine like it's not too crazy to imagine how he works great this is where you get all those extra bonus effects and the fact that you can't keep him cc'd makes him incredibly relevant in pvp and that's pretty much it for Hades. Uh, he, the only note I will say about this is I wouldn't necessarily hard farm him up immediately. I think there are other characters that you can target farm in the same store with him, but I do think that as an endgame character and as just a plain AOE damage dealer that you technically can access anytime you want through farming, I, I don't think he's as high a priority as maybe a character that could be utilized to unlock something special and we'll kind of get into that as we move on to number three now number three is a personal favorite character of mine in disney as well as one of my favorite characters in this game number three is aladdin or prince ali in this costume now aladdin is rated very high for me not because of how he works with other teams because what he single-handedly does to any team he's on quick note his basic decent attack Deal extra damage if the target is affected by slow or stun. That's huge because there are plenty of ways to slow or stun a character outside of him. So you could really get some extra value in here. But that said, Street Rat Strike, already a pretty decent attack. Special, one jump ahead. He slam dunk somebody for a ton of damage. This is scalable damage. 30% chance to gain haste for two turns definitely gain evasion which means he's going to avoid the next attack that targets him and if jasmine is present she will assist this is the icing on the cake of an otherwise great attack that gives him survivability as well as do a giant chunk of damage you will almost never regret using this attack on cooldown his ultimate is magic carpet 
uh, deal a pretty decent chunk of damage to target opponent and all characters on the row. Uh, inflict slow for one turn, always, well, guaranteed, 30% chance to reduce target speed meter by 30%. So you're hitting probably about three characters. You have a good chance at least one of them is going to have a reduced turn meter. That's huge. That is so huge. You, you might just take a character completely out of the fight by the time that they would take a turn because of this. One of the best abilities, great on his team, great outside of his team, overall phenomenal. And his passive is very simple. It allows him to sustain himself. That's it. When he takes a certain amount of damage ever, uh, he has a chance to heal himself one or two times, depending on how much investment you have. And uh, then it goes on cooldown for a little bit. So a couple turns pass and... Uh, we might do it again. So he can kind of sustain himself, giving himself enough time to go into an evasion or to take out the rest of the targets. Aladdin, I think, is one of the all around best characters from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. And I don't think you'd ever regret any investment you put in him. Number two, um, not a character I care about in the Disney lore particularly, but a character I definitely love in this game because uh, he does not like good guys and I am a super villain. So number two on this list is the Big Bad Wolf, or BB Dubs. BB Dubs, now you've seen one of my videos maybe, you know I've gone over why he's so great, so I'm gonna make it real quick in here. His basic is an execute that does more damage to a character that has low health. So it kills the guy dead. His special hits everybody, inflicts defense down on some of them, unless they're a hero, they guarantee get defense down and take extra damage, huge. His ultimate? is a giant attack that heals him for up to 30%, up to 40%, sorry, of the damage dealt. And it hits very hard. Now, I haven't even invested in him, and he's already doing a lot. So it is a very, very amazing attack, but that's not the most important part. The most important part is he always does 25% additional damage against heroes. Like I said, he really doesn't like good guys, so he does extra damage against them. And if he ever defeats a hero, all of his abilities gain a little bit of magic. So he gets another opportunity to attack those characters. I don't think there's anything else to say. He hates heroes and he murders them. He does a great amount of damage. It's improved against hero characters. He has AOE, he has self heal. All in all, I don't think any investment you put into Big Bad Wolf, if you can get him to seven star on day one, I don't think you'd regret a moment of it. Uh, he is one of the best characters in the game hands down, holds his number two slot because there's only one other character, and at this point, if you played the game, you probably know who it is, that I think is a better all-around character than Big Bad Wolf, and that is Shan Yu. Now, a lot of people will say Shan Yu is the best part of the Kingdom team. That's true, but he's also the best part of any team, and I'm gonna explain to you why. Shan Yu's basic has a pretty good chance of hitting two characters, the target and the secondary, or the next adjacent target for a decent chunk of damage, especially on a basic. Overall, that's a great kill shot. Moving into a special, it is a flanking attack that hits an entire row for decent damage, inflicts defense down for two turns, and there's a chance that this character gains offense up for two. So not only does he make the characters take extra damage, he also increases his damage if he survives to the next turn. His ultimate is a double headbutt, which is phenomenal, just throwing that out there, that hits really hard twice, and if by some chance it kills somebody, he gets another turn and a pretty decent chance of gaining crit up. So if you follow him right, he uses his special on turn one, possibly gives defense down to characters and gives himself two turns of offense up. On turn two, he headbutts a character with offense up, probably kills them, takes an extra turn, and might even have a critical chance up on his next attack, which is the basic, which will definitely kill at least one character and maybe a second because of the chain. He is absolutely insane. I would farm him before I downloaded the game if possible. I think he is the best character you can gain. That is ignoring, ignoring his passive, which on critical strike with any attack, Perform the following, reduce target speed meter by 35%. That's just a random bonus he gets. He could just reduce target's speed meter. That's it. If you build a team that gives him critical strike, like uh, Robin Hood, great. He'll do that more often. Doesn't matter. He always has a chance to do that. Crazy. 
and his leadership ability, which let's go without saying, uh, bone speed is how these games are played, so much so that I hope they stop allowing speed to be manipulated by anything other than gear and character kit, because speed is so important that I'd rather coin flips than, than seeing how someone gets a slightly higher, like one speed higher because of a sorcerer stone. When you itemize speed, it becomes a nightmare, and that's why it's so good, because Sean Yu giving himself 8% bonus speed alone is ridiculous. The, bring an entire team who's fast, like Aladdin, Jasmine, Mickey, Mulan, bring an entire kingdom team bonus speed, especially if you take advantage of it with key characters, you're gonna lap entire opposing teams that aren't doing the same thing. So Sean Yu is not only single-handedly a phenomenal character, he can immediately improve any team, but make so many mediocre characters, even characters like Genie and Jafar, so much better because of the speed boost. The Sean Yu is no doubt number one. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the top 10 video. Uh, I'm not going to be doing too much as kit reviews going forward on them, but uh, comment below and let me know what you think, uh, particularly in the top five. And I don't think it's incredibly important to look at which characters are exclusively good in the end game. I think it's important to look at which characters will carry you from the beginning into the end game. But anyway, comment below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.